An old lady in a fancy dress was about to fall off a moving staircase in a hotel. She was holding a red book and looked scared. As she fell, she remembered her wedding day and going to the hotel with her husband. Meanwhile, Carlos, a young man, came home to his apartment and saw his younger brother Oliver looking worried. Carlos tried to make Oliver feel better by saying their mom gave them a lot of money, but Oliver was still upset. Before he could say why, a detective named Marco burst into the room. Marco said Oliver did something bad. Carlos said Oliver didn't do anything wrong, but Marco didn't believe him. He said he had a confession from Oliver. Oliver begged Marco not to hurt him. Marco didn't listen. Carlos wanted Marco to show him a paper saying Oliver was bad, but Marco didn't have one. Marco still wanted to take Carlos and Oliver to the police station with his gun. Carlos got scared and started fighting Marco. Oliver helped Carlos, and they pushed Marco out of the way. They ran down the stairs to escape, but Marco followed them. Marco accidentally shot Carlos. Carlos in the leg with his gun. Carlos fell down, and Marco didn't know what happened. Oliver ran to Carlos and yelled for help, but no one came. They heard a loud noise, but no one was shouting or calling for help. Carlos was bleeding a lot, but Oliver used his jacket to stop the bleeding. Oliver was angry and tried to hit Marco, but Marco pushed him away and told him to be quiet. Oliver said they should take Carlos to the hospital, but Marco said he could fix Carlos at the police station. Oliver helped Carlos walk, and they started going downstairs. Marco saw some hair on his clothes, but didn't know where it came from. They reached a door, but it was locked. He kept walking, but it felt like they were going in circles. He looked up and down the stairs. There was no end. Marco told Carlos and Oliver to stay still. He ran down the stairs quickly, looking at the numbers and trying all the doors. They were all locked. After running a long time, he found Carlos and Oliver again standing above them. Carlos is wondering if he's losing his mind from the pain. Marco tries the stairs again, and Oliver tries the door, but nothing works. Marco is shocked to see them back where they started, throws his keys down the stairs, but they fall back up. Marco asks if they gave him something bad, but they say they're stuck too. The stairs seem to go on forever. Oliver can't call anyone, and yelling for help doesn't work. He hears Carlos in pain and wants to take out the bullet, but Carlos says no because Oliver is clumsy. Marco breaks a vending machine to get water, and Oliver washes Carlos's wound. They're still stuck four hours later. Marco looks at his wallet and finds a small card he doesn't recognize. He tears it up and throws it away. Then he gives Carlos some drugs to help with the pain. After Carlos falls asleep, Marco and Oliver get food from the machine and talk. Marco shows Oliver a picture of his family and says he was supposed to celebrate his wedding anniversary with his wife. Oliver's only answer is to threaten to kill him if Carlos dies. Oliver looks in his bag for something useful, but he doesn't have much. The next day, Carlos wakes up, but he's barely alive. He tells Oliver to live his life and enjoy it, something he couldn't do. Carlos dies, and Oliver cries. Marco checks the vending machine and sees it's full again. Marco freaks out about the endless loop, and Oliver almost kills him with the gun, but Marco calms him down. In a different place, Daniel is teaching his sister Camila a card trick. Their stepfather, Roberto, watches them. Their mom, Sandra, tells them to finish packing for a trip to visit their biological father. Daniel takes his hamster and some cards. Sandra tells him to get Camila's extra inhaler. Before they leave, the children's father calls. Sandra tells him Roberto hasn't drunk alcohol in five years. The family leaves, and Roberto throws a piece of bamboo out the window. They stop at a gas station, and Roberto gives Camila a sip of juice, even though she shouldn't have sugar because she's allergic. Then she heads to the restroom, but before that, she hands her inhaler to Roberto for safekeep. Shortly after, Sandra discovers what transpired and scolds Roberto, labeling him as thoughtless. The group climbs back into the car, but just a few moments later, Camila begins to experience an asthma. Sandra and Roberto exit the vehicle to check on her, and in a mishap, Roberto Roberto drops and steps on Camila's inhaler, completely ruining it. To complicate things further, Daniel neglected to take the spare inhaler. Family decides to return home to retrieve another inhaler, and soon after getting back in the car, they hear an explosion in the distance. They drive back to the gas station, but it's deserted. So Sandra takes some allergy medication for Camila without paying. The journey continues, and Daniel spots the same road sign again, while Sandra chastises Roberto, claiming her ex was correct in calling him a clumsy drunk. An argument breaks out, and Daniel attempts to intervene, insisting they're not helping, but they ignore him, forcing Daniel to assist his sister in staying calm. After driving for a bit, they come across another gas station, though Roberto believes it looks identical to the previous one. There's no one around here either, so they must press on. Moments later, they encounter the same sign again, prompting them to stop, as Roberto insists the road is 
merely repeating itself. Daniel loses trust in him and tries to leave, but Roberto pulls him back to the car. Sandra is determined to keep going, desperate to assist Camila, who is beginning to turn blue. They keep passing the same sign and gas station, and both the car's clock and Roberto's watch indicate a late hour, despite the sun still. Eventually, Camila loses consciousness, and Sandra continues to cry and scream throughout the journey. After seeing the same sign for what feels like the umpteenth time, Roberto halts the car and instructs the others to wait while he ventures off into the field on the right, hoping that a different path will yield different results. Camila's condition worsens, and Sandra, unable to bear it any longer, drives off with her children, disregarding Daniel's caution. She feels trapped in a nightmare, repeatedly urging herself to wake up. When she stops the car to have a breakdown, Daniel Daniel exits with Camila, and Sandra drives away without realizing the children are no longer with her. Carrying his sister in his arms, Daniel makes his way back to the road sign and watches as Sandra loops back through the same route. The next time she arrives at the gas station, she steps inside and hides to weep over her despair. Meanwhile, Daniel lies down next to Camila tragically having to witness her passing. At that moment, Roberto returns from the field on the left, confirming that every area is caught in the loop. Time goes by, and after 35 years, both men remain stuck on the stairs. Marco is now an elderly man who can't walk and must drag himself up the steps, while Oliver, in middle age, keeps himself active and healthy by reading from his bag, listening to his music player, and exercising daily. Since both the vending machine and the bag reset each day, Oliver removes all the items every morning and waits for the loop to duplicate them. He builds a whole collection of things that he keeps on the stairs, plus a shower made of water bottles. The nail clipper from his bag helps him cut his hair and mustache. Marco's side isn't as tidy, and Oliver often helps him relieve himself into a bottle. It's clear they both lose their minds, though. Oliver prays to Carlos's skeleton when it's time for the bag to reset, and sometimes he brings Marco along, covering their faces with paper bags as they say a made-up prayer. There's lots of writing on the wall that keeps track of the days and serves as a diary for the duo's wild thoughts. Marco obsesses over remembering things, but always calculates his age, Oliver's age, and even his daughter's, who must be adults by now. Before going to sleep, Marco repeats his own name so he doesn't forget it. On the hotel escalator, the old lady finally dies, and someone passes by to take a hamster from her hand. On the endless road, 35 years pass for the family, and they get food from the gas station which restocks itself. Roberto is an old man who lives like a pig in the car still parked next to the road sign. Sandra is also very old and has become unresponsive, yet Roberto regularly sits her on his lap do the dirty. In the meantime, an adult Daniel lives in the field with his hamster. Using things from the gas station, he builds a decent camp and sets up a system to keep things comfortable for survival. He keeps all the drawings he makes through the years. Whenever the reset happens, he finds an unbroken inhaler, which he angrily tosses away into a big pile. He keeps himself busy by listening to his Walkman, going on walks to have lunch with nature, and playing cards with his hamster. One afternoon, Roberto finds Camila's plushie on the road and leaves it near Daniel's camp. After seeing it, Daniel goes to find Roberto, who mentions Sandra, and notices that Daniel doesn't remember her. However, it doesn't surprise him because Sandra doesn't remember anyone either. Roberto is sure he has something important to tell Daniel, but he can't remember what. Suddenly, Roberto says, that's how old people are, at the same time as Marco, who starts screaming at 3 a.m. Oliver rushes to Marco's side and hears Marco's epiphany. He finally remembers what he had to say, which means he'll die soon. At that moment, Marco reveals he's actually Daniel, and that none of their memories are real, because it's an alternate version of their real life. He triggered the loop when he killed Carlos. Back on the road, Sandra finally dies, and Roberto buries her next to Camila. Daniel watches the process in tears while thinking about his memories with his sister. Roberto reveals that Sandra stopped talking around 20 years ago when Daniel left them to live alone. He thinks it's a good thing she died because she's finally free from that hell. Roberto and Marco are feeling a terrible headache. They groan in pain and then say they can see everything clearly. They tell Daniel and Oliver that they're dying and that none of this is real. They say they caused an incident that started this loop and warn Daniel and Oliver not to do the same. They also tell them to write down their names so they won't forget them. Roberto tells Daniel he will forget his name when he sees a police car. Marco tells Oliver the same thing about an elevator, even though the building doesn't have one. Roberto reveals his real name is Ruben. When he was 10, he got stuck on a raft with a classmate and a teacher. The teacher hurt the other boy, and he bled for three days and died. Roberto and his teacher spent 35 years alone on a raft. Before he died, 
The teacher also had a moment of clarity and told Roberto the same story. The teacher was stuck in a 35-year loop on a train track. Roberto was able to return to land and started a new life, but he doesn't remember anything until now. Marco tells Oliver a similar story. He used to be Daniel, and Roberto warned him not to get into the police car, but he did it anyway and restarted his life as Marco. Both old men say this isn't real and that they're stuck in an emotional hell while their real selves live good life. They say they're sending their energy to their real selves to keep them happy. They are the machine that moves the real world. They say a death is needed to trigger the incident and that younger people survive the 35 years better because they're subconsciously working for their real selves. Old people can't do the same because they're always stuck in the past. Before dying, Roberto and Marco give Oliver and Daniel a little red diary full of pictures and life notes. Oliver is deciding to go back to his normal life, but Daniel is burying Roberto with his family. Then Daniel goes to the road and sees a police car that wasn't there before. He makes sure no one is inside, goes back to the camp, gets his hamster, and takes some things before burning everything else. But when he goes back to the car and touches it, forgets everything and drops his hamster. He drives away wearing the police uniform he finds in the car. Daniel goes to the city, cuts his hair, and becomes detective. Marco. He kills Carlos, which starts a new loop. Oliver tries to ignore the elevator door that is now next to the stairs, but he's going crazy. He even thinks about killing himself, but he can't do it. When praying doesn't help, he finally gets into the elevator and finds a uniform. He becomes Carl, a hotel bellhop. A married couple gets into the elevator and can't stop touching each other. Oliver stays professional until they get off on their floor. Oliver releases a bee that stings the groom and causes an allergic reaction. Nearby, an explosion can be heard, marking the beginning of a new loop. 